Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Ajay Farke. You know, we are all living in the era of high stress, and everybody's focused on their work. And uh, I think we need to go from being a reactive kind of society to a more proactive society. But we have to be careful and select the right investigations for the same. So it's a very important topic, especially with the increase in the risk of cardiac disease in Indian males. Are due to multiple factors like diabetes, uh, hypertension, metabolic syndrome, etc. So it becomes very important to understand if there is anything which we have uh, to actually help us predict the onset of cardiac disease, maybe even five or ten years down the future, uh, down the line. So we can start to do something about it today. Let's get started with the current status of cardiovascular investigations. We all are familiar with the lipid profile, which consists of mainly the cholesterol, which is the total cholesterol, and the LDL, which is the so-called bad cholesterol. So if the cholesterol and the LDL are both high, very high rather, then the risk of cardiac disease is higher. So we need to reduce the same either by diet and exercise and lifestyle changes, or with the help of statins. The second one is HSCRP, which is a marker which is called. Uh, it's a highly sensitive CRP. So it's the same CRP which is normally done, but it's just detected in smaller quantities. Uh, a higher value is supposed to tell you that there is a level of microvascular inflammation in your body, and that inflammation can not just affect your heart, but can also affect different other organs in your body. But it has a correlation with future risk of cardiac event uh, as well. But it's not entirely specific for the heart. So high HSCRP can be an indicator of future events of uh, cardiac events. NT Pro BNP is a test basically which is used to di to diagnose heart failure. So in an elderly uh, person, if or even in a middle aged person, if they present with dyspnea or other difficulty in breathing, this is one of the tests done to rule out the presence of any cardiac failure, which is your heart pumping or heart uh, is not pumping as effectively as it should be, and that is why the pressure builds up in your heart. And that is why you cannot breathe uh, correctly. That is why uh, NT Pro BNP is done to rule out cardiac causes of breathlessness. Then, now recently people have found out that the NT Pro BNP is not just a diagnostic marker for cardiac disease or, car or heart failure, but it can also be a good marker to predict future risk of cardiac disease, maybe five or ten or fifteen years down the line. Then we have a standard test, which are the stress test, 2D echo, and ECG. So. Everybody who is above the age of 40 should get this done at least once every few years. And uh, an ECG along with the stress test will tell you on an inclination whether you have angina. So what angina basically is, is that chest pain. And if there are any ECG changes when you're exercising, it can tell you that the blood supply which you have, which is going to your heart during exercise and what grade of exercise, uh, that will actually make a big difference. And it can be used to diagnose the presence of cardiac disease. But it's not exactly a predictive marker. That it will actually tell you whether you have coronary artery disease now. And if your 2D echo, uh, if your stress test or ECG actually comes positive, you need to do further investigations like a CT angio or an angiography, which is basically visualizing all the arteries which are supplying your heart with blood. So if any of these arteries are blocked or if they are narrowed or uh, need to be corrected, then you can detect it with the help of a CT angio or angiogram. There are many other investigations, but I would not want to go to too much detail here. So we've covered, these are the broad tests which you would do to see whether you are at a higher risk, the risk of cardiac disease in the future. Now, these are more or less specific towards cardiac disease, but of course, you need to see whether you have high blood pressure, diabetes, and if you have kidney disease, all of that. These are the broadly cardiac specific, except for HSCRP, which is a general marker of inflammation. So now we come to a test which is called, which is new and which is actually used to diagnose the presence of uh, coronary events. So this has been around for a long time. It's called HS troponin I, which is a highly sensitive troponin I. So what basically happens with this is that detecting this in certain quantities in the body in the blood, if it's above a certain level, it can be used to rule in or rule out the presence of a myocardial infarction or an acute coronary syndrome. That means if anybody presents with chest pain in the emergency department, and if the value of HS troponin high is very high or above a certain limit, 
it is usually above 32 then this patient needs to be taken for a further workup and if it is below a certain value then we can rest be rest assured that it is a good test to rule out the presence of a cardiac event but now apart from the acute apart from the di- diagnosis of acute coronary syndromes studies are now showing that excess troponin and i can also be used as a predictive tool to predict the future onset of cardiac events maybe 10 to 15 years down the line so this is the first study which i would like to talk about here the first study would be it is actually done in the scandinavian countries and what they did was they took serial measurements of cardiac troponin i over a period of five years and ten years and they saw whether these values were actually correlated with the presence of cardiac events so let's see the first study it's titled as temporal changes in the cardiac troponin i so what it basically showed was that if you measured uh, high sensitive cardiac troponin uh, then you can also use it to predict the onset of fatal as well as non-fatal cardiac events over a period of time the second study was the biomarkers uh, consortium and in this study as well it apart from these other factors which i spoke about and family history and uh, presence of all the other previous markers and diabetes hypertension etc troponin i is an independent predictor of cardiovascular mortality so basically mortality due to cardiovascular disease the first study again what they did was they actually chose people they chose 9000 uh, and five participants without any known cardiovascular disease at baseline and then they followed them up for a medium time of 13.9 years and then they saw that it provides prognostic information which is superior to that of hscrp and that is why it could be a marker for targeted prevention so many of these people out of these 9000 participants 733 participants who had high hs troponin i actually had some kind of cardiovascular event and the first time they did the hs troponin i there was no history of cardiac event and they were completely free from cardiac disease at the point the fourth study is again talking about whether hs troponin i is a good predictive marker and whether statin therapy can reduce the risk of coronary artery disease after if a hs troponin i is supposed to be high, uh, found to be high so it found again that it predicts coronary events it is also reduced by statin therapy so any of the statins which are common rosuvastatin atorvastatin and if after one year of starting your uh, treatment if your hs troponin i has dropped then the risk of cardiac events even 5 or 10 years down the line actually goes down. So it's not a static tool. If it is repeated after one year and it is found to fall, then your risk will also fall. But if it's fall, found to rise, then there is still a high risk. And always before starting any medications, lifestyle uh, interventions are extremely crucial. So you have to try that for a few months. But of course, get your doctor's advice before, uh, before taking any medications. Now in India, there, were, there was a consensus statement where a lot of the eminent cardiologists actually came together and wrote a note on uh, HS troponin I for apparently healthy individuals. So what they came across was that they came across with a, a, a certification module which said that anything uh, under six for males and four for females will just have to be treated as a normal patient without any cardiac injury likely down the line. But anything above 12 in males and 10 in females, then they need to be evaluated further. They need to be treated at high risk. They need to be started on statin therapy and also be treated aggressively for the other comorbidities. So we have concluded here that HS troponin I seems to be a good marker for prediction of cardiac events 5 or 10 or 15 years down the line. So adding this test as a baseline and then repeating it after a year would make sense for certain individuals who are apparently completely healthy. So keep that in mind. And uh, I think there are many cardiac markers which are there in existence. So doing all of them is not going to make sense. So instead of HSCRP, choosing HS troponin I would make sense specifically for cardiac events. So if there are any other questions, I would be happy to answer them. We'll put up an email address below. So feel free to mail us and I will answer these questions. So looking forward to the next talk. We will keep you posted on the next topic as well. Thank you.